Please stand for prayer. Dear God, I want to thank you for pray, for bringing us here today. I pray that we will be touched by the speaker's words and be encouraged. Keep us safe and guide us in your way. In your name I pray, amen. Good evening and welcome to the third day of a week of prayer. Thank you all for coming to church today. Do we have any visitors here today? Okay. I hope you'll be blessed today because I know for a fact that I have been blessed for the past two days of the week of prayer. I pray that as we go along with this week of prayer, that we will grow close to God and strengthen, and grow close to God and strengthen our faith in Him. So, welcome again, one and all.
Good evening, everyone. I was just about to say happy Sabbath, but <laughs> happy Monday. I don't know how your Monday is. Mine's been very tiring. But we're here to give God praise and thanks. Amen. And we're just going to do a few songs. Let's start by singing um, How Great Is Our God. I don't know if the, um, the rest of the praise team are around, but um, I'll start by myself. Maybe they can come up later. <laughs> Sometimes I take it for granted that we go safely, but God is great because he protects us from danger, seen and unseen. The next song we're going to sing is, Oh, How I Love Jesus, two, hymn 248. There is a name I love to hear, hymn 248. <clears throat> Sounds like music in my ear. The 
this part is um, draw me close to you. Draw me close to you. Help me know you 
you all to stand as you sing our theme song. Thank you. the de- um, the ushers to please come forward to collect the offering. Thank you. <laughs> Let's sing give thanks. that you'll bless this offering and may it uh may bless it to further your the work of your church for this is my prayer in jesus name i pray amen thank you
Happy Monday, everyone. How are we all feeling this evening? Good? Excellent. I'm glad to hear. So at this time, um, I'd like us to all prepare our hearts for prayer. Um, but before we do that, um, I want us to focus on three focal points. Um, and the first one that I'd like us to um, break up into our groups um, and pray for is the youth that don't know Jesus. Um, so that's the first one. The second one I would like uh, for us to pray for um, are for those who know God but have decided to take another path for whatever reason. And the third um, point I'd like us to focus on is um, for us to pray that the youth will have and find hope and peace in God. All right. So at this time, I'm going to ask for everyone to break up into groups. You can decide how many each group is um, and just pray for those three points. Would you like me to repeat them? Yes. So the first one is to pray for the youth that don't know Jesus. So there may be particular people that you know um, from work, from school, uni, wherever it may be, uh, that don't know God, but um, you've had maybe the opportunity to to minister to them and you just want God to guide you through that situation. So pray for those youth that don't know Jesus. Pray for those who um, know God but have decided to take another path and pray that the youth will find hope and peace in God. All right, thank you.
Dear kind and loving Father, I come to you at this time to thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your grace, for your mercy towards us. Thank you for allowing us to, to reach here and to congregate together. And please be with those who are currently on their way. Lord, I pray for the youth who don't know Jesus at this time. Lord, I pray that they will um, receive you into their hearts as Lord and Savior of their lives, knowing that you will work in ways that they will not comprehend. I ask, so, Lord, um, that your Holy Spirit to, will descend upon them and give them the wisdom to look for you. I pray that we as a church and community will take each and every opportunity to serve and minister at work, uh, to friends, to family, um, whoever we cross paths with, and recognize that we can all make an impact through love, through gestures, through kindness, through God's word, and so many other ways. Lord, I also pray for those who know you but have decided to take another path. I pray, Lord, that they will receive spiritual awakening and that they will return to you, Lord. Um, help us to reach out to them, to support them and pray for them. Um, you know the struggles and the challenges that they're going through and the reasons as to why they've taken the decisions that they have. But, Lord, I pray that, um, that they will remember that your arms will always be open um, as you're always willing to receive them. And the third point, oh Lord, I pray that the youth will have and find hope and peace in you and that they will be set free from every spirit of fear, from anxiety, from stress, from frustration, depression, suicidal thoughts in the name of Jesus, that they may not be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that they will receive that, they that you will let their request be made known of you. So, Lord, I come to you at this time. I pray for each and every individual in this church, Lord. You know what each and every person is going through. I pray that you'll forgive their sins and cleanse, cleanse them from unrighteousness. Um, for your name's sake, amen. Good evening, church. We've now come to the main part of our service when we will hear from Pastor Steve McKenzie. But before we do, we'll be blessed with a special item by our lovely praise team, and then we will hear the speaker. Thank you. Good evening, church. I hope you're all well. Um, the song that we're going to sing this evening is called Always. Um, and I hope you are blessed. We are just waiting for the PA room to have the instrumental. So if you could just wait just a little bit longer. Sorry about that. He's just said one second. Sorry, church. I 
Okay, the song is Always by Kirk Franklin. Are we familiar with the song? Okay, if you're not familiar, you're in for a treat. And if you haven't heard the song, I would urge you to go and listen to the song just in case we don't do it justice tonight. But I pray that the words minister to you regardless of what comes out, yeah? Because it's about Jesus, not about us. Amen.
that's you I'll spend my always with you Jesus my whole life has changed since that day I cried your name for every time you brought me through I promise you just for me so whatever you take me through I promise you I'll spend my always spend my always with you Jesus my whole life has changed since that day Were you blessed tonight? If you were blessed tonight, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you're really blessed, let me hear someone say praise the Lord. Praise I want to thank you, my sisters, for that beautiful song. It was, it was well presented. I was touched. I felt, you know, yeah, I rock a little bit sometimes. It's okay to get happy in the Lord. Did you know that? Uh, um, when the music gets to you, you can move a little bit. You, are, are you with me? Or oh, some of you are looking at me quite serious. It's all right to get happy in the Lord. Did you know that? Oh, some of you don't sound too sure. Let me say that again. Did you know it's okay to get happy in the Lord? The Bible says when David, when David uh, was coming back triumphant, the Bible says he was in linen and he danced before the Ark of the Covenant. Are you with me, saints? Uh, there was no little dancing. That was proper dancing, joyous dance. Are you with me? So it's good to be happy in the Lord. And I, I, I get happy sometimes, you know, when I'm, when I'm driving my car and I play little music. Um, and, and you know when you're in your car, you think nobody else can hear you or see you. Sometimes I look at the street and people look at me like I'm mad because I'm in there happy in the Lord. I only play gospel. But some gospel have some good rhythms to it every now and then. You know what I mean? You get happy in the Lord. And so I want to thank you for reminding us that Jesus, he's our everything. If Jesus is your everything tonight, let me hear you say amen. Amen, amen. I, 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 I want to thank our, our, our sister for leading us in prayer today. Um, I, I, I don't know this, but from what, how you presented the prayer, I, can, I feel you have been reading the devotions in the week of prayer because it's in that same formation about, about hope. Um, um, I wanted to go through the devotions this evening, but you wouldn't believe this. I drove out of the house and left my glasses. And I cannot see what's on my phone or in the Bible. And so, I, I, and, 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 and God allowed that to happen tonight to illustrate what I'm going to share with you even now. Is that all right? Uh, because something interesting happened and, and I get to realize that we are living in a day and age where the image of God has become distorted. Are you with me? 
the image of God has become distorted. All kinds of strange views and opinions have, have come around and I believe that the devil has launched something to distort the image of God. And so I just want to present tonight briefly about, about, about taking another picture. We need to reestablish the image of God in our lives and in our hearts. Are you with me? Because the image has so much been distorted. And the reason why God's image has been distorted is because we haven't protected it. Young people, you won't know this. You won't know this. Can I talk to my younger people today? But when I was growing up, that's a long time ago. It, it, it was a long time ago. There was a time when we was growing up, you know, that we used to take, when, you know, when I was growing up, it was mainly black and white picture. Yeah, it was black and white. It's a long time ago. Black and white pictures. And then when my, par- my parents came from the Caribbean, came from Jamaica, and when they come over here, guess what? They had black and white picture. And then guess what? The, 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 you would take it to the photo shop and they would put in their color. My mom never wear lipstick before in her life, but she got pictures on the wall where they put lipstick on her mouth. Black and white picture with red lips. I, I, I think they were just trying to exhibit the technology was coming in now. You guys laughing. But, but you know what used to happen is that when, when some of these Caribbean people, because I'm from Britain, so I can talk about Caribbean people. Is that all right? They would always have these pictures on the wall in the hallway. And you know, the light would shine through those pictures and some of them were color. But you know, if you don't move the picture in the right place, the sun would shine through there and, 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 and wear out the picture. So what was a color picture, after a little while, it looked black and white. And, 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 and so if you don't preserve that picture or that image, it, it, it wears out over time. Are you, and, and, and then they used to have these, um, technology has come so good now, that you don't even need photo album. We used to have them photo album with the plastic that you put across the top of it. And, 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 and you stick them, you kind of stick them on the paper and put the plastic over it. But, and, and then still when you go back in there, half of the pictures wear out. Because if you don't protect them, but nowadays we have a better technology. But, but it's the same thing about guarding the images. Because some of us have some nice phone. But you know when you do these phones, if you don't protect, all of us, they have cloud now. But if somebody hack into that cloud and you didn't put enough security on there, guess what? You ain't got no pictures left neither. You didn't secure it properly or you lose your phone and you forget your key pass and all the rest of it. All them pictures you have on your phone, you ain't got them again. And if you don't remember the link to the cloud, I'm talking about preserving the images that we have. If we're to preserve it, there's a way that we preserve the image of God because the devil wants to destroy the image of God. Are you with me? And sometimes the picture has gone so cloudy that we can't even recognize who God is. And so it's time for us to take another picture. And I believe the thing that we need to use when we take it, if you want to take a photograph right now or to take a picture, what do you do? What's the first thing that you do? Take out, you see, you take out your phone. Us older generation, we take out camera. But the phone has got camera on it, isn't it? And, and, and I would like to suggest that you need a camera. Camera phone or, 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 or Nikon or, or Canon or whatever they call them. You need a camera. In order for you to take a picture, to take another picture of who God is, to take a picture of God, to, to, to create the image again in our minds, we need a camera. And I'd like to suggest that the camera that we need is the Word of God. The Word of God, we need the camera that we need to, in order for us to get a clearer image of who God is, we need the word of God. And the Bible says, and and now I'm going to have to ask them to help me in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. What does the Bible, no, no, before we get to 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, but before we get there, guess what? You need a camera. So if this camera is, if the Bible is our camera and you have a camera, you have a phone, do we have a picture? You haven't got a picture yet. There's some things that we have to do. You have to do what? Use the camera. 
You know, you know, you know, and, 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 and if we're to get a clearer image of who God is, we need to start using the word of God. And 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 tells us what? I need help from there. What does it say? We must do what? Study to show ourselves what? Approve. A workman need not be, a, need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if we are to have a clearer image of who God is, we ought to study God's word. Young people, you might not know about these days, but can I talk to you? Can I talk to you today? When I was growing up, and some of the older ones are sitting at the back there, and they know what I'm talking about. Nowadays, every room in the house is accessible, right? When I was growing up, you couldn't go in certain room. They, our generation, my parents, they, they had a room in the house. This, they call it the sitting room. And inside that sitting room, they only allowed special guests to go in there. And they would have, guess what they would have? They would have these special Bible. When I was growing up, they had a Bible they called the Heritage Bible. They had to pay a lot of money for the Heritage Bible. And they would put that Bible into the sitting room cabinet and open it up on a certain page and then go out of the sitting room and lock the door. You guys are laughing, but guess what? We're carrying around the Bible in our phone. And the only time many of us unlock our phone is to look at, what are the other th what are things called again? Snapchat? TikTok? I start looking at the little YouTube chats, the, the little shorts. I never watched them before. Brethren, I start watching the shorts and sit down there all glue. I, I'm going up to one what, and coming back to one and going flicking up back another one. And then some of them, till I find myself when I have a little spare time looking at these little shorts on YouTube. My daughter has to say, Daddy, what are you doing? I said, no, 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 nothing. And then, and then when they come now, guess what? I turn on my phone just like everybody else. Yo, you think I don't know? I watch what's going on, you know. You ever notice young people, when they got their phone, oh, their phone is always turned down like this. Nobody wants you to see what's going on in their phone. You, you, everybody turn down phone. I start turning down phone too. Because are you with me? Are you with me? We walking around with Bible on our phone and we ain't using it. If we're to get a clearer image of who God is, we have to use the bike, use the camera. You can't get a picture on a camera unless you use it. You've got to put your eye to the camera. You are you with me? You've got, to, you've got to put the camera to your eyes. You've got to look at it, and then you've got to focus on what it is you want to do. So you got an iPhone. I got a Canon camera. If you want to take a picture of me, what's your name? Kimberly. How are you going to take a picture of me with your camera? Yeah, you see that? And what are you doing? You hold up the phone, you're pointing it at me, and you're looking behind there, and you can see me. You follow what I'm saying? Saints of God is the same thing. If we're to get a clearer image of who God is, we have to look into God's word. Study to show yourselves approved. But not only that, but, but, but on your camera. You see these, you see these, you see these, these new little phones, these, cameras, these new camera phones? They have like an automatic they have an automatic thing, and then you have a manual focus. You can focus, you can adjust the focus, and you know it's the same thing when you put your eye to the camera, to God's word. You can't just look in one place. When you're using professional cameras, right, and, you, and you're using them, you look, it might be a little bit blurry over there. So guess what you have to do? You have to turn the focus. On, the, on, the, on your phone, on your phones, we've got little focus. You can zoom in a little bit because sometimes it's not quite clear and you want to see, see God a little clearer. You've got to zoom in a little bit. Are you with me? And, and that means you have to use the zoom on the camera lens. And, 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 and I would like to suggest that saints of God, that we, we, the Bible says um, in Isaiah 28 and verse 10, what does the Bible say there? We've got to focus on who God is. And, and I'd like to suggest that in order to get a focus, you kind of, on a, on a regular camera, you have to turn it a little bit to the right. You have to turn it a little bit to the left. You then turn it, the zoom part, and it comes in a little bit more. You have to turn. You have to turn the focus. And Isaiah says, what must we do? For precept must be upon precept. 
and line must be upon line and we must go here a little and there a little. The focus is this, is this saying to God. You can't just stay in one part of the Bible. We have to go from the Old Testament to the New Testament. You see, the, New, the Old Testament points us to the Messiah coming in the New Testament. The New Testament points us back to the Old Testament. And, and, and we learn about who God is by going from the New Testament to the Old Testament. Old Testament to the New Testament. Here a little, there a little. Line must be upon line, precept upon precept, in order for us to get a clearer image of who God is. There's some people walking around today telling you that they don't read, they, they are New Testament Christian. They, 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 they don't believe in the Old Testament. You wouldn't have a New Testament if you never had an Old Testament. The Bible tells us that we have things today, that the things of the past are there to teach us so that we don't make those mistakes again. We must go to the Old Testament and the New Testament. Line must be upon line. Here a little, there a little. Uh, 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 um, precept must be upon precept. We must go from the Old Testament and to the New Testament. Are you with me? But even after you've done that focusing, do you have a picture? You have our iPhones and this. And, and even when we got to focus a little bit, guess what? And we focus and we realize that we want to blur out that big at the back. You know some of these phones, you can do that. You can focus on just the, where you want to go, blur out that bit at the back or sharpen it up a little bit. And that's what it is when you study God's word. Going from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you're gaining your focus. And after you zoomed in and you got your focus, what's the next thing you got to do? Just like any camera. The next thing you have to do is what? There's a little button on the camera. You have to, on the phone, you have to click the thing. And you know what that does? It opens up the aperture. It captures the image on the camera. It captures the image. Are you with me? And that image is captured. And I like to suggest that the, the, the part of the camera, the camera, our Bibles have to be so intertwined in our lives that the book in Matthew, um, 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 Revelation chapter 3 and verse, and verse 20 says that, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, what does it say? Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and do what? And if any man hears my voice and opens the door, opens a shutter on the camera, opens our heart, I will do what? Come in and sup with him and he with me. In other words, after we focus on who Jesus is, it doesn't stop there. We have to invite him into our lives. Open up our hearts, open up the shutter. Press the button and it capture the image that we've just zoomed in on. Are you with me? And when we open up that, that do we still have the image yet? After you click it on your phone, even in your phone or in your camera, what else do you have to do? You know, back in the old days, we used to have camera that had a, what we call, my mom would say it had a flim, but it's film. We had a flim. You had, when, you, when, you finish, take the, when you take the picture, we used to have to take out the film and we had to take it down to the chemist or to the thing shop and, and develop the picture. And, 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 and you, you, there's a development that you had to do. And it's the same thing even with your iPhone. Guess what? After you've clicked that, you 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 gotta you gotta find it in the in, in your in your in your memory thing, is it where, where you find it? in your photos. You gotta find the picture in your photos and 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 and, and open up the picture in your photos. And and Matthew 5 and verse 16 says something that gives us an an an, an, an a sort of answer to what we need to do. What does it say? Matthew chapter 5 and verse what does it say? Let your light do what? So shine before men that they may see your good works and be led to glorify your Father which is in heaven. In other words, we've got to develop the character of Christ in our life. Just the way you develop the picture. In other, you don't want to just accept Christ in your life to keep it locked up in your phone. What do you do? You, you, you show somebody, I just took a picture. I'm looking at my two children on my phone. You follow what I'm saying? And you know when you take a good picture, you see these iPhones, though, you need to be careful of them, you know, because when you take some of these pictures, it makes you look better than you're really, really supposed to look. <laughs> some people show me some picture on iPhone, and I'm like, who that? And then they got programmed, let me tell you something, they got programmed that can adjust your picture in this phone. Make you look like something else. 
and then they have, and then they said, you know, you must be careful. You know, that's why we have to manually do some stuff for ourselves. And don't allow, don't allow science and technology to take over everything because you can have some of these things. I see some, my wife has some phones on her, some pictures on her phone of her sister. And it's her sister send them to her. Where they distort the image. And I say, who's that? And she says, my sister, and they laugh. And when I see the picture, I start laughing too. And you know something, it's the same thing with the word of God, saying to God, if we don't focus on who Jesus is, we will distort the image even on our, on our fantastic phones. Even with our complicated Bibles, and we have so many versions now. That, 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 that if you don't focus carefully, rightly dividing the word of truth, and we can still have distorted images. So after we've accepted him in our, in our heart, we, we have to develop his character and let our light so shine. This, and this is what it's about. I'm, 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 I'm ministering in the cities. It's about letting God's light shine through us. But he can't, the light can't shine. We can't, we can't shine in the community if we haven't developed his character. I started taking pictures. You know, somebody said it to me when on Saturday night we were here. And um, the moderator asked, what do you like to do for, 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 for thing? And I it just didn't remember. Then Pastor, Pastor, Warren, Pastor Warren said to me, we were standing here and he said, but don't you take pictures anymore, Pastor? I said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he said, but you used to be into pictures all the time. I said, yeah, yeah, that's true. And he said, so why don't you tell them that you do photography a little bit? I said, I didn't even remember that. I said, maybe because my daughter's taken over all the photography and she does all of that now, so I don't even see the cameras anymore. But I remember when I first started taking pictures. But that was a long time ago because we used to have film in the camera. And you had to do the light and you had to do this stuff and whatnot. And you know one of the things that used to happen? Is, is after you've done all your focus and you've done all your stuff and you... You, 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 you think you've done it and then you click the picture. When you, when you click the thing and you take it to the thing and you go down to the chemist and you get it developed, those people were wicked, you know. They took your money, you know. They took your money and they developed the picture. And when you come back to the thing, you have a thick envelope with all the pictures in there. And when you're walking out the store, you're walking out the store and you, 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 you every one of them is blank. And, and they know there was no pictures on there, but they, they print the nothing, charge you the money and give it to you, and you're walking out, and, it, and you never do it in front of the store. You always do it when you're going out the door. And then you're like, you're like you realize there's, there, there's, there, there's no picture. And, and, and you wonder to yourself, what's going on? And so my older brother used to take photography as well. So, and, and, and you know, sometimes it's the same thing. When you, when, you, when, you, when you study the word of God, sometimes, even when you think, even on your mobile phone, you thought you caught a good picture. And then when you look back on it, you're like, wait, what happened? Are you with me, saints? And then sometimes you have to go back now and you have to go to somebody who knows a little bit. You know you have some tech guys here. These, these, some of these young people, they know about phone. They know about everything to do on the phone. So sometimes we older ones have to come to young people and say, show me how to use this phone. And they just use it like it's nothing. And they just start to, and, 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 and it's the same. You, sometimes when you're reading God's word, let me tell you something. That's why sometimes you think you know who God is, but your, your, your opinion is a little bit, skewed because guess what we, we we need to go and ask somebody who has a little bit more knowledge about the word of God are you with me and young people that's why I'm here to tell you tonight that is why we have elders in the church who's been using this camera for a long time they know how to the pages of the word of God are you with me and and um, because sometimes we as young people we feel we know everything sometimes and we just want to study it by ourselves. It's not good. We have to go to those who have been in it. That's why we have elders and leaders and teachers that can. And so I had to go to my brother. Went to my brother and I said, I said, Winston, I can't, I can't get this right. And he said to me, did you check the light aperture? 
And I said, did you check this? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he teach me, and go out there, and guess what? I go back out there, take pictures again. And after I take the picture and develop the image and come back, all I see is feet. <laughs> Sometimes you just see the sky. You wonder, you wonder, you know what that means? You know what that means? You, that you will never get it right the first time. Are you with me? And sometimes, and sometimes even when you go and get the little instru in the, the instruction from somebody older, you still need to spend more time in the word in order for us to understand it. But, but you know one of the problems that we make, one of the problems that we make sometimes is that we start using God's word. We start using this camera without going to the right steps first. First, Second Peter, Second Peter, Second Peter, um, Second Peter, one verse twenty-one. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Even sometimes, after you keep using studying God's word, sometimes the image is still a little distorted. And you know why? It's because sometimes we start the wrong way. The Bible says, "What's it, where the Second Timothy? What does the Bible say? For the prophecy came in old time, not by the will of men." But, 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 not by the will of men, but the holy men of God speak as they were moved, what? Moved by the Holy Ghost. How did we come by the word of God? It, 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 by, it, it, the scriptures came to us, not by the will of men, but men of God were moved by the Holy Ghost. And I'd like to suggest if we're to get a clearer image of who God is, before we start using God's word, let us go down in our, on our knees in prayer and ask the manufacturer, The Holy Spirit. There's some of you don't know what I'm talking about. You know, but some of you, some of us as older ones and young people are like me. I remember the days when my mom, my mom got, my mom got a washing machine, a, a digital one. Them times there, we used to turn it with knob. There was no press button and light. It was just click, 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 click. And my mom got her first digital washing machine. I said, wow, mom, that looked good. My mom said, leave it till your dad come home. I said, but mom, it's only a washing machine. She said, you know what you're doing? I said, it's a washing machine. And I, and, and, and I said, just push it in here. And I said, connect these things behind here. And I put the thing in there. And I pressed the button. And it came on. Beautiful green lights. And my mom said, Steve, you know what you're doing? I said, mom, it's a washing machine. And I said, let's just do a trial run. And I find a little program and I press beep. The thing starts. Water going in there. Spinning, 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 spinning. And then it letting out the water. Then it came to the time to spin. And you know when it got to spin it, it wind up itself. Then the thing started to go bang, 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 bang. The washing machine started walking. It, 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 it bang, bang, bang. It cut. You know, you put it under the thing, the, the washing machine, walk out of the space. It was going bang, 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 you know, you, and it can't move. The thing vibrating and coming towards me. And then, and then all of a sudden, it just, it just cut out, lights gone, everything. I was like, I was like, my mom said, what did you do? I said, I, did, I, said, I didn't do anything. I, 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 cut off light, no press button, electric, nothing. I said, mom said, Steve, what did you do? I said, mom, I just put it on. And I did. And she said, you know what my mom said to me? Did you read the instruction? I, I, and I said, T -t 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 go in the box now, take out the instruction. And when I open the thing, there's a, the first thing it says, remove this first. You had to take off the top of the thing. There's a bar. That was at the top of the, you know, when you take it off, there's a bar, the stabilizing bar, so that the drum don't move in transit. You're supposed to move that first. So I move it, put it down there, put back on the lid, nothing. So I called the people and the manufacturer, the people came down. The engineer comes, I've never seen anything like this. I said, it only came a few days ago. <laughs> the, 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 man said, the man said, did you remove the bar? I said, it's over there. <laughs> that, that was long before I went in ministry. 
I said, I said, the bar is over there. I didn't tell him when I moved it. But I did move it. He said, I don't know what to do with this. He said, I, I don't. And he sent back and they had to take it back and bring a new one. And he said, when they bring a new one now, man, I read every page. I, re I thought, read everything. And saints of God, too many of us fall into that same trap. When we come to God's word, we start reading the Bible like we know it from head to foot and, 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 and that we know everything. We have to get down on our knees in prayer and go to the manufacturer, the Holy Spirit, and ask God for guidance and stop trying to do things our way. Some of us have some strange things in our mind, you know. One man said he's going to read Bible and he said, he said, he said, he said, you know, you have some people that read the Bible like this when they, they open it and they say, they pray and they said, whichever text my finger fall on. One man said, Lord, I want to do your, do your will. And he opened the text and he had finger fall on it. And Judas went out and hung himself. He said, no, Lord, it's not that one. It's not that one. And he turned it and then he, he go again and he put his finger like this. And the text said, go and do thou likewise. Saints is not funny. You know, some of us read the Bible like that. We 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 test in God. We just put our finger somewhere. Nothing go like that. You gotta be line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and, and but, but but before you go into the word, fall on your knees and ask God for guidance. And he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all our heart, Proverbs tells us. And lean not on our own understanding. And some of us want to come and put our tradition on the text. Are you, are you listening to me? Put in our tradition. You go to one Caribbean island, they have this tradition. Go to another Caribbean island, they have that tradition. And then you have all of them come together from six different Caribbean islands to one church in the United Kingdom, bringing all the different tradition come here. And then you have the English ones down here. We have tradition too. And, 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 and we're we, 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 we divided in the church. Why? Because we're not asking the Holy Spirit for guidance. Bible says we must humble ourselves on the almighty hand of God and he will use us and guide us into his truth. Study to show ourselves approved that workmen need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you know, iPhones are good. But I don't think it beats having the actual pages of the word of God. There's something about reading the pages of the scripture that remains in your mind. It's very hard to memorize the things you just read. Are you with me? It, I, I, it's good to have a Bible where you turn the page because there's going to come a time when you don't even have iPhone nor Bible. And guess what? Tonight, I'm reciting out of my head because guess what? I, don't, I can't see the iPhone and I can't see the Bible. But it, you will fall back on what you know when, 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 you, when, you, when you accept the word of God into your life. There's something about the word of God. When you read it and accept it and, and the word comes a part of your life and transforms you. And when we find and we focus on who God is and we accept him into our heart, then our light will shine and our example will come and we will be generous individuals and we will know how to love the people in the city. The week of prayer reading speaks about loving as Jesus loved. Compassionate and generous. One of the devotions for the week is talking about being generous and giving. Saints of God, are, you, you notice in these last days, we've become very, very to ourselves. Are you with me? We, we, we don't share what we have anymore. Just, just, just last week. And sometimes, Reverend, you know there's power in the word of God. That you, you know there's a text that says, given it will come back to you. 
the, the, the blessings are abundant when we share. You know, there's a text in the Bible that says, that says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse and prove me now, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it, we need to take God at his word. But many times, it's just a week ago, you know them times, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. You know there's times when you ain't got no money. I came out of the supermarket last week, or the week before, last week it was, last week. And, and I, I saw this young lady sitting outside the place. And, and, and Virgin, I didn't have money. I think I had 15 pounds. And when I came out, I was walking and I was going to walk past because you know some people, you know some people, they, they make a living out of this thing. But I looked at the young lady and she just looked. Now she looked genuine. And that's why we have to study God's word so that we can have a discerning spirit. That you know who is who. And you're able to, you, you, you're able to, and, 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 I, and I walked to the car and I had to turn back. Because who carries change around? Nobody don't have no change. You only got notes nowadays and most of us don't even carry notes. You see the young people, they got, they got, they got phone on, they got thing on their phone. And I'm like that sometimes, but I, I kind of like from the old school. I like to carry little cash. And when you put your hand in your pocket and it's the only note you have, I remember taking out the five pound and the young lady was there. And, 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 and I, when I put it to, to, to give it to her, and she actually, I, I put it to put it in her hand. You know what I mean? Because I don't, you know, there's some other ones that's always around. You have some bullies that sit collecting money. And if they see some get more money, they go bully them and thief it from them. And so I came and I went to put it in. She, she put the cup. And when she put the cup, I said, no, no, let me put it in your hand. And when I put it in her hand and she saw the fiber, her eyes opened. She was so like shocked. She was like, you think five pound is anything? I remember that there was a time when you could buy sweets. You could buy a packet of crisp. You could buy wagon wheel. You could buy some strawberry bonbons. And you could buy um, cola cubes. You, somebody, somebody know about these. Them, you, they, we could buy a whole heap of things for one pound. Now you've one pound can't buy you anything. I'm five pound. Can't. When the lady saw the five pound, her eyes opened. And, and then she'd get up and she was running cart to come and thank me. And I said, no, 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 it's all right, it's all right. I said, just be. And she said, what's your name? I told her my name. And she said, you know, I wanted to name my son that. But his father called him Daniel instead of Stephen. I said, they're still powerful names, man. Two name, powerful names, Daniel. And, 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 and she, she walking around, she couldn't believe it. You, you, when, we, when we deal with people with compassion, you know what I mean? And, 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 and every time I go back now, I'm looking for her because she was genuine. She was genuinely thankful, shocked that she could get. And you know something? The Lord surprised me with a gift later on in the week. You, you follow me when you kind of like thinking, I ain't got no change. I ain't got no. Then something suddenly come up. And it's because when we're generous towards one another, God always provides. Time is gone. We need to take another picture. In order to do that, we need a camera. I suggest that the camera that we use to get a clearer image of who God is is the word of God. We need to focus on who God is. Study to show ourselves approved. Here a little, there a little. Line must be upon line. Precept must be upon precept. And when we find and we really focus on him, open our hearts and let Jesus into our lives. And when we let him into our lives, we develop his character. So the world will know that we are children of the heavenly king. But before we read his word, let us go to him in prayer. And ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, if you want to ask Jesus to come into your life, I'm going to ask you to just stand to your feet. If you want the Holy Spirit to guide your life, just stand with me as we pray. Pray with me. Into my heart. Into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come.
come in today. Come in to stay. My heart, Lord Jesus. We don't want it to stop there. We want to say, Out of my heart shines. Out of my heart shine out. Shine out of my heart, Lord Jesus. Shine out today. Shine out always. Shine out of my heart, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. You will come into our hearts even now. And may your image shine forth from our lives as we accept you today. Father, some of us have been doubting your word. Some of us haven't even been reading your word for some time. But tonight we're standing pledging that we will use this camera, your word, to find and have a clearer image of who you are. Tonight, Lord, we just want to accept you into our lives and pray that you will shine through us so that the world will know that we are children of the heavenly king and that we can have an impact on this city. Father, people need to know who you are right here in Lewisham, right here in Catford and the surrounding areas from here to Greenwich, and going backwards to Bromley, all over. We come from different places around the southeast of London. And we know, Lord, that people need the Lord. People need to know who you are. And so tonight I pray, Lord, that you will come into our lives, Lord, and make us compassionate individuals. May we learn from you the, the art of being generous and to give what we have and know that it will come back to us in good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over when we give generously. Not only to give generously to, the, to your work, Lord, but give generously to individuals. Give generously of our time. Give generously of our, in, of our influence. Give generously of what we have, Lord. It doesn't have to be money. It could be food. It could be clothes. It could be something else. But we give generously. Put our all into what it is that you want us to do in order to be powerful witnesses for you so that we can turn this city upside down. So, Father, be with us even as we leave this place. Humble us so that we can do your will. Fill us now with the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask for healing. We ask for forgiveness. We ask for cleansing. Most of all, Lord, again, we ask that you can fill our lives with joy so that this joy that we have can be shared with everybody we come in contact with is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing our theme song.
Good night, everyone. Have a pleasant evening. Let me just say good night, everybody. If you weren't here at 6.30 tonight, you missed out on some goodies we had. I don't know if we're having any tomorrow. Where's, we're having some goodies tomorrow. So please come straight from work, straight from wherever you are. Um, tomorrow, 6.30. Um, so that we can be well filled to come in here and start sharp at 7 o'clock. God bless you. Have a good night and safe journey home. God bless.